All right, guys, we wanted to show you a little uh, update video on uh, what's going on here at the shop. And um, so I'm moving on to a different brand of uh, press brakes. These are gonna be my own brand, and uh, the brand name is called Bend Force. And we got some cool features and some cool things to show you about them. And I'm gonna show you, overlay some footage here of uh, one that I just got through installing up in Iowa. So this is the eight foot version of it in Iowa, and I'm gonna have two distinctions. Basically, there's gonna be a precision series, which would be the uh, servo brakes, and then the fabricator series, which you're looking at the top of right here, which are the normal, you know, two axis brakes you've seen in many of my videos. And then I'll have a separate, you know, more detailed video on that particular one. But I wanted to, you know, the common question I get asked all the time is, what's the difference between a two axis, four axis, eight axis brake? And I want to try to answer that and then give some pricing information going into the beginning of uh, 2023 here that hopefully will may remain intact throughout the year. I've, I've changed my prices very, very little uh, over the last couple of years that I've been doing this. So um, what you're looking at right here is a four axis brake and that is a two axis brake. And I'm going to explain and show you the difference between the two. It's really uh, pretty easy to understand. So we're gonna get up on this ladder here and show you up top on this one. <clears throat> okay, so as you see here, we got a valve block uh, going to two different cylinders. Okay, you see that? So what this allows you to do is control both cylinders independently in the controller. So the control system has, you know, coming into these, uh, connections here, individual control over both cylinders. So um, a two axis brake, and I'm gonna get up there and show you the top of that one in a second, the only has one valve controlling both cylinders. So what you can do, so four axis brake, Y1, Y2, that's two of your axes, and then the back gauge, let me show you it real quick you can see the other two axes right here. So you have in and out, this is uh, X, and then you have up and down with that rack and pinion gear right there that moves the whole back gauge assembly up and down. So if you have a bend, you know, that's already got two flanges bent on it, and the next time you go in, it, you know, the flange is bent up at, at 45, let's say like this, well, you can program the back gauge to come up and meet that. Where on a two axis brake, you can't, the, the, you know, the, all the two axis brake does is move, um, in and out, not up and down. So let's get up here on this forklift and let me show you how this is designed. Basically that's your main control right there. And you see this rod running across right here. Um, and it connects to the other cylinder. And then you got this huge torsion bar, which these machines do not have. And that torsion bar attempts to keep both of the, the uh, you know, keeps both of the cylinders in sync. But the main, the two main, you know, so two axis, four axis, what does that actually mean? How does it show up in the bending? Two big things. One is on a two axis brake, you always have to be in the middle. In other words, you can't move off center. Now, if you have a little bitty small piece of something, yeah, you can bend it off center. But anything of any consequence, you gotta be in the middle. This brake, you can bend anywhere on it. You could come over here and bend a 12 inch wide piece. You know, like if you had a specific tooling that you needed here, different tooling that you wanted here, you know, you could set it up that way. And uh, again, I'm gonna overlay um, one of these in the, uh, the video that I just did in, in Iowa. So I've also, you know, got my own branding. So Ben Force is my own brand. You won't be able to buy that anywhere else. So if you wanna know stuff about it, you know, you're gonna have to contact me. And right now I don't even have a website for it, but these are the top covers. I was just gonna try to take a peek here and show you real quick. Well, let me do that off camera and I'll come back and show you that. So anyway, guys, that's a look at, um, at the, uh, these, this is the new style. That's an old style Prima Press two axis. 
This is all I have left. I, I, I cannot believe how busy it's been and how much stuff I've gotten out the door and uh, helped try to get installed. And I still have a backlog of installs and I got tons more machines on the way. So let me show you uh, for those long-term viewers that used to see me fabricate, you know, this is the old shop and we got some projects going on around here with the uh, camera adjust a little bit. Uh, you see some big uh, beams coming through. Uh, we'll have to show you more about that when we get to it. But uh, I'm almost never here. And when I am here, I'm on the phone, you know, talking to people and helping my existing customers and, and also, um, you know, selling machines, people asking questions. So anyway, these are air compressors right here. And one or, uh, see, I think two of those are sold. I got to get them shipped out here in the next couple of days. And then I have some more on order. But that's where my laser used to be right there. And, you know, sort of the fabrication area. You might recognize the bandsaw and, you know, and stuff like that in here. But, yeah, it's all changing. But I wanted to, to take a minute and, and talk about the priorities that I have running a business here. Um, my first priority is to the people that have already bought a machine from me. You know, when I, when I choose what I'm going to work on during the week and what phone calls I re return and what text messages I answer, always, number one, the people that have already bought something from me. Always top priority. Second priority behind that are people that have paid a deposit or paid for a machine and we're just waiting to get the install done. I try to make that as an expedited process as possible, uh, given all the constraints, you know, potentially involved. The last thing I take time for is people asking a million questions, you know, and, and just, just kicking the tires and what about this and what about that? Knowing good and well, you're not going to buy it. And I, I just, I don't have time to jaw jack with you. You know, it's just not going to happen. So, um, if you're ready and you want to buy something and you have the budget, you know, these are not hard to, these are not hard to purchase. You don't need to, you don't need to ask 20 million questions. And, you know, the people that buy these machines for me, hundred, two hundred thousand dollar machines, they ask like four or five questions, maybe one phone call, boom, ready to go. And what I've learned is the people that have a million questions never buy anything. The people who have a few questions are always the buyer. So guess who I'm going to talk to? I hate it. You know, it sucks that, that it is that way, but you know, there's just some people out there that know they're never going to buy a Lamborghini, but yet they will stop by there and ask for a test drive and ask the, you know, sales guy a lot of questions. So anyway, there's my rant about that. So a little, I mean, we're kind of moving around here a little bit more about these machines. Uh, you can see the wiring cabinet is very nicely done. And this version, the Benforce uh, line of brakes have some upgrades that are pretty noteworthy. Um, particularly in the motor package and the, uh, and the hydraulics. So we've gone to this Innovance uh, power on demand. So you're gonna see in the video here in a minute, one of these running an eight, an eight foot version of it. And you'll notice that it, uh, when, when the thing is not under power bending, you don't hear the hydraulics running, so. All right, so I'm cutting away to the uh, Iowa machine. This is the very first uh, Benforce machine that uh, has been installed, and I was up there uh, a couple weeks ago. And that's uh, Shane you're looking at, and we'll have a separate video on that. But if you listen to the operation of this machine, you'll notice when it drops down into the forming cycle, you uh, hear the hydraulics spin up. But as soon as the machine is retracted, the hydraulics are off, so you don't have to sit there and listen to it. It's also got a little bit quieter a little bit more muted sound for you know 145 ton machine that this one is than the uh traditional ones and if you're a customer that's already bought a machine from me i'm sorry guys you know it's it's just the way things go you know if you bought a a 2019 dodge ram and you're looking at the 2023 guess what they got a lot more nicer features it's just how it is 
And, uh, you know, it doesn't mean I'm, you know, favoring one over the other. I'm going to support one less than the other. All the machines I sold, I'll continue to support the best I can. These motors right here, this Innovance uh, brand and uh, the uh, servo drive for it, it's the same thing that runs the compressors, uh, same brand, uh, same company that makes them. And then we've also upgraded from the Rexroth hydraulics over to the Hava HAVA hydraulics. Very smooth, very quiet, um, notable upgrade. And I did raise the price on all these. So, um, you know, I used to sell this one right here for 39,800. And then I added some tooling and we kind of went up to 42, 43. And then we've recently added those, uh, those uh, upgrades to the motor. So this is now 45,000 delivered and profit margin is still the same. It's just, I'm including more stuff in it and charging you for those extra things, but they're, they're significant upgrades and noteworthy. And you know, the tooling alone, you know, that I've added in here for 2,500 bucks, if you try to go buy it, you know, you'd spend five. So I'm just doing it to try to, you know, make it a more complete machine. So now I want to give you some information on pricing on these, on these press brakes. Um, never mind the traffic in the background. So the four plus one axis brakes, um, I'm stocking two sizes of it. I only have one here now. I had the other sizes and I've, I've sold out of all of it, but I have more on the way. They should be here within, you know, less than 30 days. So five foot, 70 ton, four plus one axis with the Dellum. DA53T controller that has the 2D on-screen drawing where you can actually draw your part out uh, with your finger on the screen and, and convert it over into a bendable program. That's 45,000, as I mentioned, with the tooling. So the tooling looks like this, all segmented. You get one punch set, and then you get, this is half inch and three quarter inch openings. You're also gonna get one inch and two inch openings. You'll have four different V openings that will allow you to bend anything from thin sheet metal all the way up to quarter inch. So if you wanna go above quarter inch on a machine like this, uh, you can do it. It's just, you know, the question I always get asked is how thick can you bend? Well, if you're asking that question, you need to educate yourself on press brakes. It's, it's a 70 ton hydraulic ram. You can bend whatever you want with it. If you get the right tooling, I mean, I got one customer that's got one of my very basic five foot 70 ton brakes and he bends half inch at 17 inches on it, but he has the right tooling, has the right understanding. So I'm trying to educate you here a little bit. If you go to the Cincinnati press break website, they have a calculator on there where you can put in what material you want to bend, what tooling you're going to use. Okay. So, um, I mentioned about the, uh, the press break calculator on the Cincinnati website. Now they actually have an app you can. Uh, you can put on your phone here. So, but if you want to just use it on a computer, it's super simple. Let me show you real quick. So right here, you just select the material you want. Uh, right here, you select your die opening. So for mild steel and thicker material, you want to use eight times the material thickness. So let's just say we want to bend quarter inch. So we're going to do eight times quarter inch is a two inch die opening. You know, you can select the grade here if you want. Uh, mild steel obviously doesn't have any uh, subgrades. So the bending length on a press brake is always how wide your part is. Let's say, now let's say 24 inches wide and then how thick is the material? So 0.25 and then uh, right here, calculate it. You need 30.6 tons to bend that. And it will tell you how much tonnage you need to bend, make that particular bend. So back on the pricing, um, so the eight foot 145 ton version of this is, um, is 65,000 delivered. Again, it comes with the same tooling package, just a bigger machine, same motors, same everything. And then, um, I'll put a summary here at the, at the end of this so you can see it all on one page. All right, so um, 
eight, eight foot, 145 ton, four plus one axis with the controller, with the all uh, tooling, with the hydraulic packages. The uh, price is 65,000 delivered. And at some point I hope to carry the, <coughs> the 10 foot, 200 ton. You guys saw that in a previous video. Um, that one is going to be somewhere in the 86, 87,000 range with the new, um, motors and, and so forth. So, all right. And then the two axis brakes like this one, eight foot, one twenty ton, two axis brake is, uh, 43,000 delivered for that. And then the five foot 70 ton version of it is 25,000 delivered. And I've sold a ton of those. I probably sold 70 of those this past year. And on the way, I have 10 machines coming that are a little bit smaller, a little bit lower tonnage to lower the entry point to get in one of these machines. And it's going to be a four foot, 45 ton, two axis brake for 19,000 delivered. So hopefully you understand the difference now between the two machines. The other thing I didn't mention is crowning. I was just, you know, glancing at it while I was talking to you here. So when you, when you hear like four plus one axis, six plus one axis, things like that, the plus one is always the crowning. This is mechanical crowning compensation. And it, um, when you program a bend in here, as you get, as you get wider and wider with the bend, the, the mechanical crowning starts to compensate and you know puts puts a static compensation variable in here and then if you need to based on the actual result that you're getting you can tweak the uh, mechanical crowning compensation to take the crown out of it um, a machine like this a two axis brake has no crowning so you have to live with the result the other thing the other major difference sorry i'm, I'm rambling here uh old school like i used to make in my videos the other main difference between the two axis and the four axis you have to be bending in the middle and then on a, on a two axis brake, if you try to bend something the full width or even at half width on that machine, the right and left bends will not be equal and you have very little adjustment to make them equal. The only thing you can do to equalize the bends on these is to disconnect that rod right there and index one side or the other to try to offset for it. And it's a pain in the butt. I recommend if you need to make a wide bend and have your right and left be equal, don't get this machine. I know it's attractive because of the price, but don't get it. You know, don't, don't, just don't. And in fact, I may stop carrying the eight foot version of this and, and only do the five foot, you know, because of that issue. All right. So with this machine, because you have individual control of both ram cylinders, what I recommend if you're going to, if you have a large part that's going to be five foot wide, you know, don't, don't, you know, come in here, you know, trying to bend the whole thing right off the bat, cut a two inch wide strip. That's the full width of the machine. Do a test bend on it. Check your crowning, check your right and left to make sure they're equal. And you can, you can adjust for that and offset for that in the, in the, uh, machine and dial in your bend.